Marina, that's the bartender. Is that right? The bartender's name is Marina. Let me set my stopwatch. I don't want to run over time here. The bartender's name is Marina. They used to call him a barmaid. I think they should be called an alcohol sales associate. Sammy Amounts is the door person for the night. Can I say door woman? Door gal? And Craig, the greatest sound engineer that ever lived, is behind the board back there. And I, I warn you all right now, if the sound is awful, it's entirely my fault because Craig's hands are a little bit tied because instead of having a guitar and a bass player, instead, I've just got, I've just got this, got thing. this thing. thing. I've got a I've thing got with a, a thing bunch with of a knobs, bunch knobs, of knobs and a bunch of sliders, bunch of sliders, sliders and a bunch of buttons. So it's really hard for the sound guy to adjust the levels. I really got his hands tied. It's just me, me just me, me and the, the microphone. microphone. And a couple and a other couple magical other devices. devices. Like right here, for instance, most times you would see a guitar, a bass player, and a keyboardist on the stage. But nowadays, a lot you're seeing a Macintosh computer. I've been seeing that a lot lately. When you look on the stage, there's a Macintosh computer. It's not uncommon. Macintosh computer, Macintosh computer. Macintosh computer, Steve Jobs. Macintosh computer, Macintosh computer, Steve Jobs is in his grave. Macintosh computer, Macintosh computer, Macintosh computer, Steve Jobs. Macintosh computer, Steve Jobs. say thank you to all the magical people who came out tonight to support, to enjoy the evening, to clown it above all, and sadly I say to all the people who said they were going to go on Facebook, I'm okay with it, it's not a big deal, a curse upon their fucking heads. Samia, I tried to get so many people to come out here tonight, it just wasn't happening, and not only a curse on the heads of those who did not attend, you know who you are, because the video will be on YouTube. But in fact, they're going to be missing something incredible, something, incredible, something, incredible, something, magical, something magical, and something, something, something otherworldly, other other world, other world, something, that something that couldn't exist anywhere else. anywhere else. Some of you know I went to Uzbekistan recently. I just spent a little over two and a half weeks in Uzbekistan. That's in Central Asia, for anyone who doesn't know or care. Uh, it's next to Tajikistan, Ka Kazakhstan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, and a couple other stands I didn't name. And I've got all kinds of magical, incredible stories to tell you. But first, it's imperative that I tell you how I am jealous of rubber dildos. That's the first thing you need to understand in order to hear the rest of the stories. So, one day, I was in the apartment that I live in with my girlfriend. And I was walking around. I walked through the apartment and I went into the bedroom to check an email or to do something. And I looked down the bed and there sat a bag of dildos. And I say a bag of dildos, not one, not two. I'm gonna, without exaggerating, I'm gonna say there was probably six or seven dildos, various sizes, various colors, various makes, and I would guess various uh, components that made them up. You've got silicone, rubber, polypropylene, a lot of things that dildos are made out of. And so I saw the bag of dildos and I stood there for a minute and just kind of studied it and I said, there's the rabbit. Does anyone not know the rabbit, the dildo? If you don't know the dildo, the rabbit, you wouldn't raise your hand right now and say, I don't know what it is. So it's, it's a, a dildo that pretty much revolutionized the female sex toy industry. 
It was so well known and so popular and apparently was able to so successfully give a woman unknown pleasures. That's an album, by the way. I stole that. That it, they even had an entire episode of Sex in the City about it. So you've got the rabbit, the hummingbird. These are, I would say, the two most well-known female sex toys. So there's the rabbit. There's the bag of dildos. And I walked back into the living room and I just said to Andrea, who was typing on a computer, that's my girlfriend, she might be here tonight, feel free to raise your hand. And so I said, Andrea, when did you get the rabbit? Like, I didn't know you had the rabbit. And you know when someone's typing, they kind of talk for a minute, but it's like, uh, Joe said something about the cat died. It's like that, that's what happened. I said, when did you get the rabbit? And she goes, oh, Carolina gave it to me a little while back as a gift. You know, how, how did you know I had the rabbit? And I go, oh, well, the bag of dildos was on the bed. I saw it there. And as she was typing, she said, oh, yeah, I was looking for something, and I found, the, I put, took the bag out, the, the bag of dildos out, and I forgot to put them away. So what was, what was said to me was, I just want to review this for my own sanity, I was looking for something. The, ba the bag of dildos is on the bed, and the excuse begins with, I was looking for something. Okay. She was looking for something, and she had to take the bag of dildos out and place them on the bed. I kind of just heard the story, and I thought, all right, there's clearly a lie. Plus, when you know someone, you know that they're lying. There's really no question about it. It's obvious, and it's so blatant. There's no getting around it. Secretly, I've been emotionally injured since I saw the bag of dildos on the bed because... You know, I'm going to be honest here, moment of truth. There's going to be a lot of those tonight. Um, the bag of dildos is intimidating. My penis is not the size of a giant rubber dildo. And although I haven't seen a lot of penises since junior high, elementary school, and the locker rooms and whatnot, going to venture to say most males who are not in the, the porno, porno industry have a cock the size of a sex toy. Could be dead wrong. I don't know. Anyhow, so I'm a little emotionally injured, and I'm kind of just saying, I'm cracking jokes about it and saying, yeah, sure, I'll go get the mail, but uh, liars don't get any mail today. You're not allowed any mail. Or, sure, I'll do the dishes, but uh, only for the people who tell the truth. Until eventually she said, you're right, I did lie. That's what happened. And then she goes, but a big deal. I'm sure you jack off all the time. Okay, so... I'm sure you jack off all the time. What can I say to that? I kind of just had this proud moment. I said, you know what? I do jack off all the time but at least I don't lie about it. So I, I, for a second, I thought this made me a better person, like I was proud and mighty. And so I want to have a moment of truth that basically is going to tell you there's no pride and there's no honor, and although I might have said, sure, I jack off all the time, but at least I don't lie about it, I would like to publicly degrade myself on stage and tell you I watch or have watched pornography where women shoot milk out of their asses onto a man's face, videos where there's 10 guys pissing into a funnel and the funnel is in a girl's mouth, videos where a girl sits on a toilet and farts and a guy licks out the girl's asshole while she's farting, videos where girls shit into other girls' mouths where they shit onto guys' faces, a video where a girl shits into a gift box and wraps the gift box up and gives it to someone as a present, videos of women sucking off dogs' dicks, videos of a girl getting fucked by a dog, uh, and if you haven't seen that, the camera angle is from back here, and when the dog ejaculates, the dog's penis swells up, and he tries to pull out, but he can't because his cock is swollen inside this, you know, immoral human being who decided to do this act. And so, yeah, I jack off, but, uh, you know, it's uh, tr tranny pornography, uh, fart slave pornography, the list goes on, but just wanted to tell you guys a moment, moment, of, moment truth. of truth, of truth. <laughs> and that there was no honor in saying I jack off all the time, but at least I don't lie about it. But back to Uzbekistan and my magical journeys and travels I had over there with the danger, the danger. and the mystery and the people and the police and all the different all scares, the I, had scares I had over there. Scares so the so. first story I want to tell you about Uzbekistan I call Market Wipe. I was in Tashkent, that's the capital of Uzbekistan, and uh, I was in this bazaar. If you haven't been to a bazaar, it's essentially a place that has a lot of the shit being sold everywhere. They sell spices, fruits, vegetables, socks, tampons, shoes, toys, pots, pans, uh, spices, and uh, eclairs, confectionery items, anything you could think of as being sold here. They don't do Rite Aid on the corner and a couple bodegas every couple blocks. There's just a big market that has all kinds of stuff there. 
And so I'm walking around, and this was a couple weeks ago, and it was really nice weather, t-shirt weather, unlike here. And I had been walking around all day in the heat, and I suddenly realized I had to wipe my ass. It was itching, and I had to take care of this, right? And, you know, again, I had probably shat that morning and probably took care of business then, but you know how it is when you're walking around all day sweaty. So I walked to the nearest public restroom, which they actually have there, and you pay a little bit of money. In American dollars, it's the equivalent of about 20 or 30 cents. So I paid the money, and I walked into the guy's restroom and immediately realized there's no way I'm going to be able to wipe my ass in here. I saw four stalls, and the stalls are about up to here, okay? Reason being is because that there's no real toilet as we're familiar with it. There's a hole in the ground, and there's two rigid things where you put your feet and you shit there. And I asked a Pakistani friend I made along the way, I said, I don't really understand. How do you shit into these things? At which point he gave me a demonstration. You basically, you're sitting like this, and you're wrapping wrapping your arms around your legs, and this is how you shit. I've never done it like this. Perhaps one day I will. I got away without doing it in Turkey and now Uzbekistan, and we'll see. So it makes sense that the stalls would only need to be about this high for the person who's hiding, taking a shit in there. And so there's the stalls, and then in the middle, I'm standing here, and then there's a woman mopping the floor in the middle of all this, and I just walked in, and I thought, there's no way, but what do I do now? Because... It, this is really weird. I don't want to just stand here like a weirdo for a minute and then walk back out. Like, what are people going to think then? As if anyone would possibly care what I did in there, why I walked in, or what happened afterwards. But when you're obsessed with yourself and you live inside your own mind, that's what happens. And so I'm having my junior high idiot moment sitting there, and what am I going to do? Well, i got to do something. I'll go take a piss. So I walk over to one of the fake half stalls, whip it out, and I'm taking a piss, and there's a guy shitting right there, there's an old man shitting right there, and there's a woman mopping the floor behind me when I think, is it possible, could I make it happen? And I said, no. It would be the same to me as if I pulled down my pants right now and wiped my ass in front of you. I'm simply not comfortable doing it. And that's exactly what happened in Uzbekistan at the Chorzu Market in Tashkent. I could not make it happen. That's Market Wipe, guys. Now, it's essential I tell you that... I didn't set an alarm clock most days. Some days I did, so I could lift up my suitcase and pretend to work out and be in good shape on the entire trip. But I dreamed a lot. I had all kinds of magical, magical dreams, dreams in Uzbekistan. Uzbekistan. And so the first dream so the I want to tell, tell you about is called Mark Breeze's New Job. Mark Breeze is not here tonight. I'm sorry. For those of you who don't know him, imagine a tall, handsome guy who wears a hat and a hoodie at all times. He used to work multimedia for MTV, and now he works on contract editing commercials for MTV. He can't be here tonight because a few days ago, his mother's house caught on fire, and I guess she almost died, walked through the living room as the television was melting and the glass was exploding, and so they had to go to Ohio and visit the family and take care of them. So just picture Mark Breeze as being a really nice guy, though, and otherwise, you know, the, the dream is shot. So Mark Breeze is getting a new job. And he's working at a company, and he informs me, he says it like this, this company's so fucking good that people would beg for their table scraps. And I don't know why he's all macho about it, but he is. And I just said, all right, that sounds like a good job. This company that Mark is now working for in Dreamland is so cool and so amazing that they're having an induction ceremony for him. They're not having the first day on the job. They're literally having an induction ceremony where Mark is standing in a locker room like this, side by side with the actor who played Loki in The Avengers. Anybody not see The Avengers? So, oh, you didn't see it. You did see it or you didn't? Fuck. Well, Loki is played by Tom Hiddleston and he's basically an evil looking guy. That's who owns the company that Mark now works for. And they're standing in a locker room next to one another and there's an entire parade of paparazzi people continuously photographing them standing here. And they're standing and they're dressed like superheroes. This company is so cool, nerd-friendly, and just kind to the geek type that they decided to induct Mark into the company by dressing as superheroes. And when I say dressing as superheroes, I don't mean something you got at Rite Aid. I'm talking about full-on metal armor outfit straight out of a movie, standing there. Mark's lips are painted blue with blue lipstick as he stands here next to Loki, which again, is not really Loki the evil villain. It's just the owner of the company dressed up as Loki. So they're standing there and they're kind of gesturing and you know cracking jokes and 
butting elbows back and forth at the big press ceremony of Mark getting a new job. And I'm confused. I'm looking all around. I say, Mark, what were you? You looked like Wolverine, but you weren't Wolverine. He goes, oh, I, I was Bear. And I go, there's a superhero called Bear? And he goes, yeah, it's Bear. And I go, I've never heard of Bear. I mean, what's his superpower? And he goes, oh, well, you know, Bear, he puts the shit in his back and he shoots the shit out of his back. Dreamland. I have no explanation for these things. And I just said, okay. The press ceremony is over, and it's now Mark's first day on the job. And he's setting up his desk. When you think of setting up a desk, you put your computer there, your printer. If you're at work, perhaps a picture of your wife and children. And uh, whatever else, a couple pens, paper, stationery. Not in this dream. Mark is, Mark's desk is a giant rectangular table. And I want you to picture a square board like this. Put it flat and imagine magical, glowing, rubbery flowers. Essentially, this material right here, this rubbery, weird shit they make children's toys out of, growing out of these boards, except they're glowing as if they came from the movie Avatar. Mark is taking those and putting them on his desk one by one, filling this little brown table with them, this large rectangular table. For whatever reason, why am I at Mark's first day on the job? We don't know, presumably because I was the one having the dream, and that's just part of the deal. So I took my own little board with plastic, rubbery, magic, glowing shit coming out of it, kind of like out of nowhere, and I went to put it on the desk, and before the wood ever touched the table, Mark kind of slapped it out of my hand and said, dude, fuck, are you trying to make me lose my new fucking job? Don't forget this table is, or this job is so fucking good that people beg for their table scraps. And I just said, oh, Jesus Christ, I'm sorry, dude. I, did, I thought I was trying to fit in with the company. I didn't know it was going to be such a bad affair. I'm sorry, dude. I'll put it away. And he goes, don't fuck up my new job for me. So that part of the dream ends. Now I'm in a bathroom with a woman who works for the company named Marcy. She looks like Jackie Hoffman. If you don't know who Jackie Hoffman is, uh, you, do you know the show, the children's show, Arthur? Anybody know Arthur? He had a friend named Buster who was a bunny, and he himself was either an anteater or an aardvark. Angelo, what was Arthur, the children's show? Was he an aardvark? What the fuck was he? An antelope, that's totally backwards. This guy has no idea. But there, this woman essentially, picture a 90, or I'm sorry, like a 65-year-old aardvark, anteater thing, woman in the bathroom with me, and she's trying to make out with me, and I'm just telling her I'm not really into it, and the next thing I know, I'm sucking this woman's tits in the dream, okay? And that ends, and I see the boss, who was previously dressed as Loki, the villain, and he's now essentially looking like uh, Kevin Spacey, and he's very office space, Bill Lumberg, and he goes... Peter, what's happening? And I go, hey, not much. And he goes, heard you tried to have sex with Marcy in the bathroom. And I said, no, I didn't do it. I mean, I sucked her tits, but I didn't, I mean, you didn't have sex. And he goes, why not? And I go, you know, I wasn't really that into her. Plus, you know, I'm in a committed relationship and all that. And he goes, ah, maybe next time. And so that part of the dream ends. And now we're all at Burger King at rectangular tables, eating Burger King together as a company. That's the end of Mark Breeze's new job dream. Does anyone know this song? Pop music. Pop music. The song is pop music, and the artist's name is M, okay? Simply the letter M. If you go to YouTube and type in pop music, M, this video will come up, okay? It's a wonderful song, and M himself is wearing a pair of really cool sunglasses. He's wearing a leisure suit, and he's kind of dancing through the video, and he's got a bunch of girls. So now you know about M, the artist, and you know about pop music, the song. Now let me tell you about my dream I had. I'm in a basement with Dan Ionatelli, Jesse Wozniak. These are my old friends and bandmates. I've played with them for years. And we're playing that song, pop music, over and over and over again. And we're not playing it right. We're not playing any of the changes no one's really sounding good, no one's singing, and it doesn't really sound like pop music because we're just kind of going ding ding tick it tick it ding 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 tick it tick it ding 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 ding. Essentially playing Ghostbusters, which is almost the same riff as uh, pop music by M. And then all of a sudden, in the midst of our hours of playing this song, there's a knock at the door upstairs. Who could it be? So I left the bandmates, 
went up the stairs, and again, we're in dreamland, so this is not the apartment I live in. It's some gargantuan, amazing, huge apartment, and there's a woman in there. I have no idea who it is, and the woman answers the door, and I'm kind of looking past her, like, who's at the door? And when she moves to the side, holy shit, it's M himself, the artist who sings pop music, except he doesn't look suave with his leisure suit and cool sunglasses anymore. Instead, he looks very Europop somehow. He has blonde spiked hair, um, purple sunglasses, and he's holding a baby. And so I said, holy shit, it's M. I, I gotta let him in, what's gonna happen? So M comes into this giant apartment and approaches me and I just say, M, I can't fucking believe you're here. Come on in. And I'm walking with M and I'm about to walk him downstairs and I'm just thinking, do I tell him, dude, I love pop music, it's such a great song, because M is basically a one-hit wonder, and presumably he's got an entire catalog of music, if not one album, that he's proud of and likes, and probably wants to blow his brains out, because he was a one-hit wonder. Or maybe not, maybe it's fantastic, but this is my concern in the dream. I don't want M to get mad that I only know his one song. So I don't say anything about the song, or I love your music, I just tell him, come on downstairs, we're jamming. And he comes downstairs, and eventually we're like, M, we were playing pop music just now. It's really coincidental that you came over while we were playing pop music. And we don't play it again, and to be honest, M doesn't say anything the whole dream. He doesn't care, and it's really bizarre that he's here while we were playing his song. And that's about the end of M's magical journey, journey, journey into, dreamland. into dreamland. Does anyone know what song this is from? I'm sorry, what movie? It's a theme song from a movie. Terminator 2, he said it. This is the theme song from Terminator 2, Judgment Day. The perfect theme music for me to tell you about my next dream, okay? I'm in a movie theater, and I'm sitting there by myself, and there's a woman over here. And I'm talking to the woman like this, and I say to her, but it's good to know famous people. And she, she doesn't seem to understand. I go, yeah, yeah, but it's good to know famous people. And she didn't seem to care much. And all of a sudden, bring, 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 my phone is ringing. Who could it be? It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. I pick up the phone. Arnold, what's going on? And Peter, what's happening? Please forgive me for that. I'm not going to do any more Arnold Schwarzenegger impressions tonight. And I hope I can one day be forgiven for doing that one so badly. But in this dream, he's not calling me because we're just friends. Arnold Schwarzenegger's calling me because we're accountability partners. Now, if you don't know what an accountability partner is, and it's kind of one way here, I, he is not my accountability partner, I'm his accountability partner. And again, if you don't know what that is, it's basically like a sponsor in the 12-step programs, or if you're in trouble with the law, a probation officer. It's someone who keeps tabs on you, someone who you call and speak with and tell them the day's been tough, but I'm pushing through, and they tell you you're doing a really good job, kind of like a life coach. So I talk to Arnold, and I just say, what's up? Catch me up, buddy. And Arnold Schwarzenegger says, things have been really good, and I'm, you know, I'm pushing through, and he just tells me that his life's going well, and he's had some ups and downs, but right now things are really good, and he had a tough day, but he feels good about things. And I just tell him, you're doing a really good job. Keep it moving forward. And a lot of other things that a life coach will tell you if you pay him a couple hundred dollars. And I'm telling him these things and just saying, man, you got to just do what you do. Don't worry about what people say. Don't sweat the small stuff. You're doing amazing. And just remember that. And don't worry about where you were or where you're going. Just focus on where you are. And he thanks me. And he's doing the Arnold Schwarzenegger laugh, which is incredible in the dream. It's even better than in reality. So he goes, ooh, Max wants to talk to you. Max is Arnold Schwarzenegger's son in the dream. Arnold Schwarzenegger has a 16-year-old son named Max, and if that's true in reality, then I give my subconscious mind a lot of credit for picking up on that. I didn't fact check this one, I will later though. So he puts Max, his 16-year-old son on the phone, and I say, Max, what's going on, buddy? And he goes, hey, Uncle Peter, and not uncle like I'm a family member of the Schwarzeneggers. Instead, it's just a creepy motherfucker who's always around your family, and you have to call him something so the kids don't get confused, like uncle, aunt, neighbor. And I just say, Max, your dad is doing so good. You know, he's just doing all the right moves, and everything's good right now. You know, I'm really proud of him, and I think you should be proud of him too. Again, this is what an accountability partner does. 
And he just says, yeah, you know, but I'm really, I really want my dad to start taking more naps. Can you, do you think you could talk him into taking more naps? And I say, yeah, why? And he says, well, Arnold, my dad is really confused. He's really working hard and he works so hard that he gets really tired and needs to take more naps. And you know, he, he just gets fatigued at the end of the day. And uh, I said, buddy, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure, that, <clears throat> excuse me, that your dad starts taking more naps. Put him back on the phone. And while this interchange is happening, Max is getting Arnold back on the phone. I look over at the woman from earlier, you know, but it's good to know famous people. And I point at the phone and I go, Terminator, Terminator, telling her what's happening. Arnold gets that back on the phone and we kind of wrap things up, hang up the phone, and I look over at the woman, fold my arms again, and I go, I mean, for instance, that was Arnold Schwarzenegger who just called me, you know, the Terminator. And now Andrea, my girlfriend, is sitting with me in the movie theater all of a sudden. Who can explain? The Terminator movie begins. I don't know what Terminator it is. It wasn't two. I just played the song for, you know, just to get you in the mood. And the Terminator movie, four, five, six, or whatever, is so fucking terrible, it's unbelievable. In the dream, movie, the Terminator himself is going house to house in Hawaii speaking to homeowners about local politics. He's trying to educate them about what's happening in the community. And what happened, I really think this is what happened, is I have juxtaposed the movie The Descendants starring George Clooney, which is basically what I just described with the local politics, Hawaii homeowners, with The Terminator, which seems appropriate because in real life, me and Andrea went to see The Descendants and it was so fucking bad because again, this boring shit was happening. We walked out of the movie and got our money back. So in the dream, we're looking at each other and we're like, this sucks, let's just get out of here. And so now we're walking around in a mall and that's where the movie theater was. You know, occasionally there's a movie theater in a mall and it's a really special, magical thing if you've ever experienced that. If you haven't, you go to Queens, they have one. I think it's called the Atlas Park Regal or is that the one in Times Square? I don't remember. But we're walking around in the mall, and all of a sudden, I am hijacked. My mind is hijacked. I look over at a screen inside of a Best Buy type of store with television screens and whatnot, and the Terminator 2 trailer, I'm sorry, not Terminator 2, the Terminator trailer is playing on the screen. And oh my God, does it look fucking amazing. The Terminator is blowing everything up. There's all kinds of fucking explosions. Batman is in the Terminator movie, battling the Terminator. Bane, the villain from The Dark Knight Rises, is also in the Terminator. And you know how he's got the thing on his mouth? In this, in this ter new Terminator movie, that thing lights on fire, it turns to ice, and so Bane, Batman, and the Terminator are all battling each other, and I'm watching the screen awestruck, and I just turned to Andrea and I said, we got to go back to watch the Terminator movie. This is too fucking good. I mean, look at this. To which she says, no, it was so bad. Don't you remember Hawaii and the local politics? And I just said, yeah, but I mean, are you seeing this? Batman is in the fucking Terminator movie. We have to go back right now. And that's the last I remember of that magical dream where for once in my life, I got to be Arnold Schwarzenegger's accountability partner. That was a really special moment for me. So... I legitimately had an amazing time in Uzbekistan and had all kinds of magical adventures, but uh, I didn't think any of them were that funny other than trying to wipe my ass at a bazaar and uh, a couple other items. But I did have one very important thing to share with you all, and it's about a problem I've had lately down in my basement where my recording studio is, where I work, okay? And there's fruit flies everywhere. Fruit, fruit, flies, flies everywhere. Every fruit flies, fuck you. Fruit flies all around. In my basement. Yeah. Down, 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 in my basement. Fruit flies all over the place. Fruit flies everywhere. Started with one, one became two, two became three, three became four, four became five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah! One million fruit flies, but buzzing around, but buzzing around, all over the place. I've had moths and I've dealt with that, but I've never had fruit flies. Didn't know what to do. I did what anyone would do. 
I went to Google. I went to Google. Mr. Google, won't you help me out? Won't you help me? Just help me. Just get those flies out of my face. Get those flies. Get, get, get those flies out of my place. Get those flies out of my face. Get, get those flies. Get, get, get those flies out of my place. Get those flies out of my face. Get, get, get those flies out of my face. Get those motherfucking flies away from me. Drinking a glass of water. Drink, drink, drinking a glass of water. Mmm, fruit flies all around the rim of the glass. Drinking a nice cup of tea. I like to enjoy a cup of tea while I work on music. Fruit flies all over that motherfucker. Fuck, fuck, fuck you. you. Fruit flies. flies. Fuck you. you. Fruit flies buzzing, buzzing, buzzing all around. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing all around. Just get those flies out of my face. Get, get, get those flies out of my place. Get those flies out of my face. Get, get, get those flies out of my place. Get those flies. Get those motherfucking flies away from me. Away from me. Motherfucking flies away from me. Motherfucking flies away from me. Get those motherfucking flies away from me. Motherfucking flies away from me. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing all around. Buzzing, buzzing, buzzing all around. Fuck you. Got a fruit fly, got a fruit problem, fly problem in my basement. And that's the clown that's for tonight, clown guys. I made, guys. I made fun of, made fun of having a Macintosh computer on stage. Talked about wiping my ass in Uzbekistan. I talked about how I'm jealous of rubber dildos. The Terminator, Batman, Mark Breeze, pop music by M, and fruit flies. And Jesus Christ himself. More, more Jesus Christ there, there isn't anymore. Thank you guys all for clowning out. And thank you too. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna say every member of the staff here tonight. Marina! Marina! Send me a You hear that? She said hello. And Craig, the sound, sound guy. God. Thank you guys for clowning out and for biting the clown and chomping it. I appreciate the support, the laughter, and all the barnacle. And don't forget clown sink. Thank you. Thank you.